Welcome to the Enduring Gifts of Marvin Gaye podcast. Join me as we celebrate these enduring gifts, the songs of Marvin Gaye. At, at one point I'm listening to Marvin deliver this song and I was like, this is an opera. He's singing this song and it's opera. It's all so high as well. Marvin takes it very high. It's it's an opera. Like these ladies in the background, dude, they're they're up there. And he's not singing in his highest falsetto, but he is singing la 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 i was a uh, part of this reading around i was doing they said that this was one of the first if not the first album that motown released where they included lyrics in the album and they were saying that uh marvin so hold on here's how i'm gonna break this down I'm going to reference my Pinterest page, right? And it's it's Pinterest. Um, just look up the Enduring Gifts of Marvin Gaye, and you're going to find me on Pinterest. Let me actually let me go there for one second so I can give you the exact address. I mention it. It's in my outro of every episode, but it is... It is... Once I logged in right there, it still wasn't at my... Address. Okay, so it's Pinterest.com forward slash Marvin Gaye underscore enduring underscore gifts. I have a board that is called, let me get to my board. It's called Marvin Gaye Actor. Oh, hell yes. Because in 1971, Marvin went to LA, Los Angeles to film a movie. And he's an actor in this movie, and you need to watch this movie. And I have the movie on my Pinterest page, so you can watch it. And the name of this movie is Chrome and Hot Leather. And Marvin Gaye is in the movie from start to finish, and he has speaking lines, and he is an actor. And you need to see Marvin Gaye acting. So you can not take your eyes off of him for a single scene that he is in and he is in that movie from start to finish and he even kicks ass towards the end of that movie so you please get your life and watch chrome and hot leather which was made in 1971 which as i mentioned what's going on was recorded in 30 days uh, and I cut myself off from finishing that thought in the previous episode. But it was to say that a conversation happened between Marvin Gaye and Barry Gordy to where it was on Barry's part supposedly saying that, all right, if we are going to move forward with releasing this album and you like making an album in this vein, get it done. I'll give you 30 days to get it done. And, you know, can you do it? And so he did. He busted it out in about 30 days. Well, here's some interesting stuff. And I'm glad I'm, I'm thinking of this right now. So Marvin, as he's wrapping it up, right, like he's needing to get out to Los Angeles to start filming this movie because it's literally happening in the same time frame. Like what's going on is not finished. It's not completely wrapped up, packaged up, pressed out on albums and in the, the album cover and out on shelves yet before he's needing to be in LA to start recording this movie. So part of the article that I referenced in the previous episode, whatever, I've already disparaged that article enough, right? <laughs> I don't need to, I won't do it anymore. But um, part of what that article told me is that uh, basically the album had been approved, signed off on by Marvin, right? And it was supposed to be like, okay, now we've got this. It, it's, yeah, I think of it like in, in doing my work, right? There has to be a, a stop. Pencils have to be put down. That's what we call it. Pencils down. You know what I mean? Like it's just, there's got to come a point where we have to stop because it has to get into reproduction. It has to get made. Okay. We can't be messing with this anymore. So it was at that point. You know, and evidently Marvin had been good with it and he was done and he'd taken his hands off of it and they were supposed to be able to have it to start getting it made into records. But as he was heading out to Los Angeles to make this movie, 
he snagged all of the materials. They call it the masters. I thought what I heard it referred to. He snagged the masters and he took it with him because he wasn't done. Right? He wasn't done. And it was his, so he wasn't done. So he took it with him out to Los Angeles. And what happened when he did that? And I learned what this instrument is called. It's a Mellotron. He had just gotten his hands on this instrument called a Mellotron. And what he did is, once he had these masters with him out in Los Angeles, so that in Detroit, Motown was not able to get started pressing out the album, he got with his, uh, you know, the Motown engineers out in Los Angeles, and he gets his hands on this instrument called a Mellotron, and what he does is he changes Mercy, Mercy Me. Because he, Marvin Gaye, adds in the Mellotron that we hear at the end of Mercy, Mercy Me. And honestly, is that not the most defining, most recognizable element of that song, right? The, anybody recognizes and knows that that is Mercy, Mercy Me by the ending of the song. Do, 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 do. That's a Mellotron. Marvin had changed his mind that he wasn't ready to hand it over, snagged his product, took it with him out to Los Angeles, and decided he needed to add that Mellotron to Mercy Mercy Me. Thank you, right? Like, that's what makes that song, that's like the defining aspect of that song. So, um, yeah, like, I just, I got on that tangent right now because you have got to see the movie Chrome and Hot Leather. Marvin is an actor in that movie, like, and he's in it from start to finish. He has speaking lines. He has his own scenes. Get your life and watch that movie. And it is on my Pinterest board. Marvin Gaye acting in a movie, Chrome and Hot Leather, 1971. So yes, literally, like, the, he is just, he hasn't, he hasn't let go of what's going on for it to physically be pressed out onto vinyl records before he is out in Los Angeles starting to film this movie Chrome and Hot Leather. That's another reason to watch this movie. You'll be like, oh my gosh, Marvin Gaye, that's what he looked like, like right when he was still putting the finishing touches on what's going on. They said that he had already grown his beard, his full beard, but he had to shave it off for this movie. So that's like also probably one of the last times that you'll ever see Marvin clean shaven. It's just you, if you, I am not even going to be able to invite you back to my podcast if you don't watch this movie. <laughs> uh, I mean, come on, like, who are you if I've told you that Marvin Gaye acted in a movie and possibly you hadn't already seen that? And you are not, like, needing to maybe even pause this episode to go watch that movie. But as far I, and of course, I'm, I'm, I jest. But when I just now said that about inviting to um, listen to my podcast, I'm actually going to my podcast dashboard right now because I have to just shout to you guys and just thank you so much. We are around the world. And this just speaks to me, the volumes that it speaks to me about the love that Marvin Gaye has around the world to this day. And that's exactly, I thank you. I thank you for getting it. I thank you for loving Marvin Gaye with me, right? Thank you for loving Marvin Gaye with me. And I, I, you know, maybe you were even thinking if I'm saying, like, who am I to thank you? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need to thank you. Maybe you need to thank me. So, <laughs> but I just, I, I thank you for sharing this space with me in love with Marvin Gaye, for Marvin Gaye. So I'm shouting you out in Germany, Australia, the Philippines, Japan, Ecuador, Canada, and the Netherlands. I love you. Thank you. Yes, I'm here for it. This is what it's all about. I I understand it. You understand it. I get it. We get it. So here's one thing that I would just also call to action to you guys. Spread the word. 
tell five people, you know, get everybody on this movement, right? That I want this to be a movement of love of Marvin Gaye. And it really just goes back to what I explained about Marvin Gaye is joy on demand. He provides joy in this life, in these times, on demand. And that's a necessary uh, weapon to have in your toolkit in this day and age is an ability to bypass and surpass circumstances and get into, tap into your joy that cannot be touched and taken away from you. Yeah, I'm glad that you get it with me. So, save the children. Um, I was out in the country with the top down tonight and I was listening to this song over and over and over again because I just needed to get it and so I mentioned opera I got opera I, I get these ladies in the background singing opera I get Marvin singing opera so and let me finish a thought um, why I got off onto the tangent about he was out in Los Angeles filming this movie and that the album What's Going On, if not the first, is one of the first that is released by Motown where the lyrics are included. Well, Marvin is out in Los Angeles and the lyrics are needing to be given to someone back in Detroit so that it can get given to whoever's going to print the album covers to put the lyrics into it. And so the way that this happened is that Marvin was on the phone singing. He literally sang his album to uh, an administrative professional that was in the Motown studios. And she was typing up as Marvin was singing to her on the phone so that she could get the lyrics. And so she is literally just transcribing exactly what Marvin is singing to her on the phone but an element of opera about that is like and why this song gives me opera is because marvin literally sings in the song and this woman that was on the phone with him literally transcribed into the lyrics and what you can read on the inside of the album cover is la 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 i feel like that is one of the very few times, I, I'm not convinced that it is the only time, but I, but I know it is one of the very few times where Marvin is so into the song, so into song, that lyrics of the song are la la la, la la la, la la la. But isn't that the most adorable? And isn't that opera? Isn't that Fi that reminds me Figaro 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 <laughs> La 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 So he, la 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 He's just he's so into song that lyrics of this song are that are la 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 that's opera right <laughs> that's not opera Subscribe to our show so you never miss the enduring gifts of Marvin Gaye. So until next time, thank you for listening.